Okay, U.S. history for Friday. This should be shorter today because I'm going to send you off to do some work. Plus, you have your Friday fun day. So we've already re taught and reviewed the Declaration of Independence. We've already taught and reviewed the Northwest Ordinance. Yesterday, we told you about the Articles of Confederation, how it was an awful system. And because it was an awful system, we had this Constitutional Convention. Okay, that was to fix it. So this Constitutional Convention is to fix that. And what we ended up doing is just throwing that away entirely. And that's how we get to our fourth and final document, the Constitution, which we're going to spend the most time on. And then I told you about the three branches of government. There could be a future worksheet on this. Actually, the worksheet I'm giving you today may touch on that. Uh, and of course, it's fair game on the test. The three branches of government, legislative makes laws, executive enforces, judicial judges or interprets the laws. Now. The last thing I told you is that after this plan came out, it was decided that the people would get to approve it. I mean, that's an amazing thing about the Constitution. We didn't say, here, this is it. The people got to vote and decide. And right away, a group of people emerged, many of whom were helping to write it, called the Federalists, who said, this plan is great. We've got to approve this. And then there was a group of people called the Anti-Federalists who were against it. Now, I'll say this, as a big fan of the Constitution, I mean, you don't get something tattooed on your back over seven years and several different sessions if you don't love it, if you hadn't heard that rumor before. Oh, sure. So anyway, as much as I love the Constitution, I'm very thankful for the Anti-Federalists because the Anti-Federalists complained about things they didn't like about it and to compromise, the Federalists said, oh, okay, we can fix that. So there are these specific things the Anti-Federalists said, oh, this thing stinks because it doesn't have this. And the Federalists go, that's fair, let's add it. And so the Anti-Federalists made the Constitution noticeably better, okay? So we're picking up right here. So this is your first new note. The Anti-Federalists complained that the federal government had too much power, not enough for the states. So they did things like, for example, there's the 10th Amendment, which basically says, if the federal government isn't expressly given the power to do it, it falls on the states. That's why something like your driver's license falls in ha the hands of the state. Obviously, there's nothing in the Constitution about driving because there was no such thing as cars in the 1700s. So when that emerges and people go, oh, we should regulate this, because it's not in the Constitution for the federal government to do it, it falls in the hands of the states. So there were things like that done to say, OK, here, here you go, anti-federalists. You're right. There, there should be more power for the states. They worried there was no list of rights. This is probably the most important thing that they complained about. This is probably the biggest thing. The Anti-Federalists said, where are our rights listed? And the Federalists were like, oh, they're assumed. And the Anti-Federalists said, no, 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 no. Don't assume anything on this. This is so important. We've got to spell these out. Now, the Constitution was also very clever in that they said, hey, things are going to change, so we can adapt it. We can amend it. Now, you know, hopefully, that these amendments have been tallied up. There are 27 amendments to the Constitution. Well, the very first 10 came right away because what the Federalists said was, you approve this and we promise the very first thing we'll do is list your rights. And they called it then, these 10 rights that were listed, your Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are just the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. So th there's some crossover, and it confuses some people. It's part of the Constitution. So because the Anti-Federalists said this, we got our Bill of Rights, and I can't think of any more important contribution. Your Bill of Rights may be the most important thing I teach you. I, you know, I told you earlier, there's nothing more relevant to what I teach than the Constitution, and there's nothing more relevant within the Constitution to your life than the Bill of Rights. All the amendments are important, but boy, the Bill of Rights, that, that comes right out of the gate pretty hot is important here. So James Madison, a Federalist, said, hey, I will add a Bill of Rights as soon as we have our first session of Congress, which he did. And they worried about a large standing army. And there were some small concessions made to that. But th they just worried that there was going to be this large standing army that would end up feeling an awful lot like being ruled by the British. And so these concerns were brought up and addressed. And that, again, is why the Constitution was made to be better. Now, to convince Americans that this was, in fact, the right thing to do, three Federalists in particular, John Jay, Alexander Hamilton, and James Madison, 
They went on to write a series of essays that appeared in a lot of newspapers, mostly New York newspapers at first. And because they're all Federalists, and they're all explaining why they think the Constitution is great, we call these papers the Federalist Papers. Now, the Anti-Federalists actually had a series of papers, too. Those are much lesser known. They're called the Anti-Federalist Papers. But these Federalist Papers explain, here's how this is going to be great. And it was just designed to convince Americans, vote for this. And it worked. It worked because the Constitution was approved. The people of nine of the original 13 states approved it. And according to the Constitution, as soon as nine of 13 states approved it, it would be valid. Now, in reality, you really needed all 13 to agree to make it worthwhile, and eventually all 13 do. And then every state that comes into the Union since then, that's part of their deal. They have to accept the Constitution. So the Anti-Federalists had these complaints these complaints were valid, and those complaints made the, the Declaration, excuse me, the Constitution better. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all the notes we have for today. Now, you have two tasks today. Okay, the first is once you have those notes done, you're going to do a formative on this section. Now, this will appear differently for you guys. It won't just be a page here. It'll be in your task list for today. And you know that this is not graded. And so these questions will appear, and these are not graded. And you might say to yourself, well, why would I do it? One, it's good practice. You're going to see these questions on the test. Okay. Two, you know, after you submit this, you can actually see and get feedback whether you got it right or wrong. And some of these questions are reworded a little differently, but also on the worksheet that is graded and can only be submitted once. So your second task to do is to make sure you complete today's worksheet. It is really all about, and you need th those notes, about whether or not we're talking about which of these four documents, the Articles of Confederation, the Constitution, the Declaration, the Northwest Ordinance, and then some of the details of each and some other things we've covered in this section of notes. Now, if you don't have this section of notes, before you do that worksheet, you should make sure you do. Otherwise, that worksheet is going to be really, really tough. Okay, That is due by midnight. You're going to have a new document of the week on Monday. It's too late uh, for you to turn in your document of the week if your class has started yet. Now, if you're watching this before your class has started, you have up until the start of your class on Friday. And then finally, uh, you know, put a smile on your face. Watch the Friday Fun Day video. Maybe you won. It's one of my, it, it's the best video I've put out so far uh, because of some equipment I borrowed from a friend to make it a little bit more interesting. So hope everybody has a great weekend and uh, gets a great grade on that assignment. See you guys.